Good afternoon, special agents. How are you today? Awesome. How's your event been so far? Excellent. Glad to hear it. Would you come back again next year? Awesome. So it's my pleasure to be here today. Uh, my name is Jason Sparks, and I'm the senior product manager for assessment within Structure. Some of you uh, know me as the guy who got to talk to you about Gage yesterday, and you've seen me in the tent for the last day or two. And uh, I also get to contribute to other things like Canvas with our new course-based assessment tool uh, that we call quizzes.next. So it's my pleasure to be here today to talk to you and share with you some exciting things related to assessment, course-based assessment within Canvas. Um, for those of you wondering about my uh, presentation title, um, it's an anagram. In keeping in with the spy theme, uh, I, I, I took my title and made it into an anagram, and hence the description of solving the mystery of quizzes.next, an ace sees Miss Stimtron, assessment is not a crime. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go, yeah. Um, so a year ago, I had the opportunity to, to stand up here in this very room, actually, and talk to you about the proof of concept work we are doing related to uh, the new quizzes tool within Canvas. And uh, it's, I'm so proud today to, to talk to you more about the updates around that tool. Um, but first, I have a story. This is a sod house. It's a, anybody here know what a sod house is? Yeah, it's a house that's essentially made of, of mud and straw. And this is the house where my dad grew up, the actual house uh, on the Nebraska-South Dakota border on the Nebraska side. Uh, my, that side of my family immigrated to the United States in the 18, early 1800s uh, from what was then Prussia. And uh, like most people did from that part of Europe, uh, surprisingly enough, they came to South Dakota and Nebraska. And for over 100 years, 120 years, um, they were hay farmers. And so my, when my father grew up, he was a, a hay farmer. And they were very poor, which is like a lot of families in that part, in that time of uh, American history from the 1940s. And so 18, when he was 18, his mother, my grandmother, obviously, um, drove him to the next major town. It was his 18th birthday, and she gave him a present. And the present was a small box, and inside the box were two pieces of cloth. And they were her apron strings. Like, literally, her apron strings. And so, uh, she told him, you're 18, you're a man, go make something of yourself. Leave. So he had enough money to buy a bus ticket. And so he took the bus from uh, Gregory, South Dakota, to Los Angeles, and he stayed with his uncle. And from there, he became uh, uh, an apprentice electrician, and he learned how to actually run wire and so taught himself how to be an electrician. And he went from being a practicing electrician to a, a journeyman and a professional. He had his own company, became a licensed general contractor, but then he decided he wanted more. And so he, when he met my mother, they got married, they had three kids, uh, and during that process, he put himself through night school and earned his degree in electrical engineering, and uh, eventually became senior vice president of electronics for a major telecom within the United States. So he went from being living in a sod house to making something of himself. He did his mother right, did her proud. And all along the way as I grew up, one of the things he taught me was to be successful, you have to put your heart into something every day. You have to give a bit of yourself 
in what you do every day. And so as we talk about this new tool, I wanted to introduce you to the team who has given a part of themselves, who has put their heart into the tools you'll be using every day, the hours, the nights, the weekends. This team has given a part of themselves, just as I have, for you. So I'd like to introduce you to the quizzes.next team. So there's me, and there's uh, my other colleague, my associate product manager, Kevin, uh, my colleague, McCall, Sid, uh, a product manager, Nick, our program manager, Mark, our principal designer, and John, and K-Dub, also principal designers, um, and Jen, who is a UX developer, UI developer, and then we have our engineering team. And then we have Chris, our, Chris, and Mike, and John, and Michael, and Dave, and Vidya, and Ryan, and Brian, and Moni, and Ryan, and Christian, and Davis, and Hannah, and Mark, and Jeff, and Jim, and Augusto, and Jace, and, and Jeremy, and Matt, and Frank, and Han, and Jared, and Mark, and Michael, and Omar, Eric, Felix, Robert, Stephen, <laughs> QA, uh, Gentry, Mikey, Tyler, Darius, Indira, Robin, Leo, Costi, Andrew, Nathan, Diego, Jelena, Robinson, Rachel, Jacob, and Ben. And while I can put requirements on paper, these are the folks who really make it happen. And they've given a part of themselves. But it doesn't stop with the core team who's worked on assessment. It's also you. Because over the last year, we've had many opportunities to validate our tool set with users. And we've been working closely with our partners from around the world to evaluate the tool set and get feedback for, from our Canvas family. So you, my Canvas family, are all a part of this process. And I wanted to recognize all of the schools and users we've had in the United States, Canada, Spain, the Netherlands, New Zealand, and Australia. Uh, thank you so much for contributing uh, to the project. So give yourselves, please, a round of applause. <clears throat> so, I know you have questions. And I'm sure the first question is, where are we today? What's up with quizzes.next? And there's only one way to answer that question. How about a demo? <laughs> so, let me show you where we are. So I've logged in oops, to an instance of Canvas. You should see my desktop here. And we're going to create a quiz together. So I'm inside of Canvas, and I'm on the assignments page. And we have our new add quiz or test button. One of the first things you'll notice is that we're moving away from calling everything a quiz, because there's more to assessment than just a quiz. Uh, so yeah. The quizzes tab will eventually go away when we uh, make the decisions around the end of life for, for current quizzes, or what I'll call quizzes classic. Um, and I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. But we're gonna go ahead and um, create a new quiz. So we click on that button to add a quiz. We give ourselves a name. We say how many points we wanna give the quiz. Uh, we can choose our assignment group and then choose how we want to display the grade in the grade book, whether it's complete or incomplete, points, et cetera. Um, and we'll just choose points for now, but I can show this as a complete or incomplete quiz, uh, a complete or incomplete assignment. So we'll choose points and then we'll save and publish this. And we are now directed to the test. But I'm not just gonna create any test. 
I'm gonna create a test that I've imported, or I've exported, rather, from Canvas. So we have our test, and I'm gonna import content. And I'm simply gonna drag and drop this QTI file from my desktop into this modal and import a quiz. Let that work its magic behind the scenes. I get my success message, and sure enough, there you see is our quiz. Now, as I author this quiz, uh, what I'd like to do is just to double check the flow and uh, the organization of my questions. So I can expand my item bar, the question navigator on the left-hand side of the page, and I can review the content of my test. I can see the item type, I can see the question stems, and we can review the content. But you know what? I've decided, I think question four really should be question one. So all I'm gonna do is drag and drop uh, question four into question one's place, and you'll notice the item bar updates and renumbers, and the assessment itself updates and, and renumbers. Um, but, yeah, it's, thank you. Um, my, my wonderful fan up front. Uh, and we can always uh, do the same thing in the test form itself. So I'm gonna drag and drop this item, and you'll see that everything shifts, including the item bar. But maybe I want this question about Elvis to be number one. So I'm simply gonna drag, I could also drag and drop from the assessment form itself into the item bar, and you'll see that question 10 now became question one. <laughs> And then, you know, because not all of us have the privilege of using our hands for everything, we have limited dexterity, um, I also have keyboard accessible drag and drop. So I can use the keyboard uh, on these arrow commands to move uh, content in its place. And you'll see that question one now became question two. So lots of great things coming in accessibility. Uh, we're gonna add our instructions. And then we could say that's it. But I'm not done. I've got a lot more to show you. So I'd like to show you one of our brand new item types. Let's create a hotspot question, shall we? So I have our stem, and we're, I have, we have our hotspot interaction here, and we're going to uh, create a question. I used to teach pharmacy, so that's why all my examples are pharmacy-based. Oh, I'm sorry, sure, it says, which state was the first to require certification and registration of pharmacy technicians? Um, so, how do we do that? Well, we're gonna drag and drop our map into this question. And I now see uh, my map, and you know what? Unfortunately, this state isn't a square, it's not a rectangle, it's not an easy shape. In fact, most people have problems drawing this shape. So we got you covered. Let's trace the state of Texas. Yes way. There we go. So as long as a student clicks in Texas, we're good. But as you can see, I also now have the ability to align outcomes at the item level. So let's align an outcome. So we'll, we'll select outcomes and our new modal comes up and we let our outcomes load. This may take a moment because of the wireless. Um, and we can select our outcomes. And I'm just gonna pick an arbitrary outcome, so um, my, don't mind me because I'm gonna pick an English language arts outcome for a pharmacy question. I'm, I promise I know what I'm doing, usually. So we're gonna pick, a, we'll just pick writing, we'll go into a group, and another group, and we'll pick these two learning outcomes. And I'm now gonna go to a different folder and pick 
different learning outcomes. But you'll notice the two I previously selected have remained selected, and now I'm just gonna select uh, one or two more. So I'll align this one item to these four learning outcomes and select OK, and we now see these outcome names are associated with this particular learning item. If I make a mistake, that's all right. I can simply delete uh, one of those alignments. If I want to, I can also add this item to one of my item banks. I can select the destination and add this item to one of my item banks if I want to. But I'll talk more about item banks in just a moment. I now also have the ability to add item feedback uh, for a student who gets the answer correct or incorrect and then general feedback. So for the correct answer, we can say, great job, Texas for the win. And because we have the rich content editor, I can format that text. For an incorrect answer, uh, we can say no. It's the state of Texas. beginning in 2000. And then for general feedback, we can say, please review your notes from week four or five. And so that way, depending upon the correct or incorrect answer, a student will see this feedback. So they get some essentially personalized feedback based upon their interaction with content. So we'll add that, and we can continue authoring our assessment. Um, we have our other interaction types, like uh, matching, so I can even edit this question if I wanted to. I can add a different question or pair, uh, so I could add that. If I make a mistake and click out of that, our items validate, so you can't have an, an empty state for our items. I can add additional distractors or extraneous distractors that won't be used. Um, for this item, I also have multiple answer, so we have the ability to pick one or many answers. Uh, for an item, and we can even shuffle our choices if we wanted to. However, I know what some of you were thinking, well, what about none of the above and all of the above? Because if I, in Canvas today, if I shuffle those answers, none of the above could be the first answer. Well, that's okay, because we're gonna lock those last two answers into place. <laughs> so the other f five distractors will shuffle, but none of the above and all of the above will remain fixed. Uh, in that spot. You'll also notice that while I am clicking done, um, I actually can edit by clicking in and out of the question. So you don't have to worry about clicking update and then save, it's, it's click to edit. <clears throat> now let's go ahead and add uh, a numeric question. So I'm gonna add a numeric question to this item, to this assessment. And uh, we're gonna say, uh, how many pharmacy technicians are currently registered in the state of Texas? And my number is old. I'm gonna say uh, the answer should be around 48,000. Um, but, the number could be, is actually more specific. It's probably around 49,850 uh, by now. But that's okay because I, if, my, if my students decide to be more precise, I don't just have an exact response. I can also have students reply with a margin of error. Uh, in this case, we'll say it'll be plus or minus a margin of error of around 3%. Uh, but I could also have an absolute value of just three. Uh, but we'll say 3%. Uh, we also have other options for within a range, so a range of numbers, uh, or a precise response with a certain number, of, with a certain type of precision, whether it's significant digits or decimal places. But we'll, st we'll stick with a margin of error, and we'll say uh, 48,000, and that'll be 3%. So that's our new numeric item type. So we built our quiz, and we can look at other item types. Um, we, I've shown you uh, matching and multiple answer. Let's go ahead and build a categorization question. So let's uh, pick categorization, and this is a new technology-enhanced drag-and-drop interaction. Uh, so we'll add a question here. Um, class, of, actually, let me, let me take that back. Um, I'll show you this in a moment. So we're gonna actually go to our item bank 
and add content. So I'm gonna scroll up to the top of my test and click on my item bank tool, and we're gonna add items from our bank. So I'm gonna pick the bank that I'd like to use. In this case, we'll say pharmacy law, regulations, and standards. And I have my items, and I can expand and view uh, the, the stem and all the correct answers uh, for each item if I want to. I can also see the item type uh, in here and the la day it was last edited uh, within my item bank. Pretty powerful stuff. Um, and then uh, I can pick and choose uh, which items I'd like to use. Uh, so let's scroll through our bank and see if we have any exciting new options here uh, for categorization. I don't believe I do, but that's okay. We're gonna insert um, this item. So I simply add the button, click on the add button, and that item now insert is inserted into my quiz. But if I wanted to say, have a more unique assessment form and insert random items, that's okay. I could simply click all or random and close my item bank. And then we can see I now have this question group. And I don't have to use all of my items. I can randomly select items and say I want two items worth one point apiece. And now I now have a random question group inside of my test, questions 15 and 16. Once I'm done authoring my test, I can go to settings and I can choose to shuffle questions. I can display questions one at a time and allow or disallow backtracking. Uh, I can require a student access code. Uh, in this case, we'll say farm a C, pharmacy. And I can have a time limit. Uh, we'll say uh, two minutes for this quiz. And then, if I want it to be even more formative, I can allow multiple attempts. And there's a lot more settings coming down the pipeline, like being able to control visibility of results and when you can view results. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and allow multiple attempts. I'm gonna choose the score I wanna keep, and we'll say the highest. And I can have unlimited attempts or limited, and we'll say in this case we can have two attempts. And then we're now gonna require a waiting period between attempts. And you can see it can be hours, minutes, or days. and we'll just say one minute. So I've, I've set my, my test, and we're now gonna return to Canvas, and we can see that we now have this test ready to go. Well, as a student, I have also logged into Canvas, and we're gonna take this assignment, take this test. So I'm gonna click on uh, this test, in the, the testing engine launches, and I have two minutes, and I have zero of two attempts taken, and this is my first attempt. We're now gonna enter our, pa our passcode, and we'll submit that. The code is successful, and I may now begin my assignment. So we'll begin the test, and the countdown begins, and I can hide the timer if I want to, uh, and you'll notice the, the test scrolls underneath that header bar, so the submit button is always there, and we can begin taking my test. But you know what, as a student, um, maybe I'm one of those students that's like, to, that's like to skip around. So I can simply click on an item number and I scroll immediately to that question. And in which case, uh, for those of you who really wanna know, a Schedule II drug can't be filled in over the telephone in most states. Um, so we're gonna go to the top and we'll just start picking uh, questions and our answers. I'm not paying attention because we're just gonna keep going. And you'll notice that as I answer questions, um, the item updates on the sidebar indicating that I've answered the question. And the image below was taken during a meeting when President Nixon appointed Elvis Presley a special assistant and agent of the DEA. Ironically, that is true. Uh, oh, here's our hotspot question. Um, I think it was Wyoming, so we're gonna pick Wyoming here. And we'll just keep on going. We'll just answer our questions. <laughs> All right, so we'll now look at our matching question. And I'm just going down the list here. And there we go. Oops, I have 30 seconds. Well, hmm, okay, we'll just assume uh, this works. And notice how all these shuffled and these two answers stayed in place. So let's take a guess here. Um, codeine, 
and we'll say alprazolam, and uh, phenobarbital, why not? And we're just gonna let this submit. Time's up. I can't disable the Java console. I can't, I can't go back. Time is up. Time's up. So let's go to the results. Let's see how we did. Oh dear, I did not do very well. <laughs> so we'll take a look at the feedback. We can see the correct answer, and then we can see the incorrect answer and the correct answer uh, directly below it. And maybe, oh, I got the Elvis question true, or correct, that's great. Um, and then, in this case, here's the, my selected answer for a hotspot question, and then my incorrect answer. And then sure enough, no, it was Texas beginning in the year 2000, and now I have general feedback to please review my notes from week five. And we can continue scrolling and see the correct answer, and uh, my selected answer and the correct answer uh, accompanying that response. And that's what a, a correct answer looks like. And then, oh, I actually did pretty well on this. Uh, so we can see our correct answer for matching, and then the two that I got incorrect for, uh, the, for the other two matching. And then our multiple answer, and uh, this assessment. Uh, this, this last question here, this multiple choice question. So, what you think? Yeah. And as a student, I can go to my grade book and I can see my grade that's passed back into Canvas from the application. If my instructor, if I had an essay question, I can come back and I can see any feedback uh, given to me by my instructor, but I can come back here and see uh, my, my correct and incorrect answers here. So let me go ahead and uh, show you uh, an essay question. So we're gonna construct an essay question. And we're just gonna say this is worth three points. And we're gonna save and publish. We'll provide a response to the prompt. And we're gonna build an essay question. So I'll enter my prompt. And the, the prompt is, describe the impact thalidomide had on the drug approval process in the United States of America. And from there, I have my prompt, uh, and I can then enable or disable the rich content editor so I can require my students to respond in plain text only. I can disable spell check. I can show a word count to our, to our students. And then I can also set a word limit, like a minimum and a maximum. So that way, uh, my students are aware of the requirements and they are alerted to the fact that they have or have not met the appropriate parameters for that essay question. Um, it doesn't prevent them from submitting the assessment, but they're told they're not within the acceptable parameters and that's also shown to the grader when they're marking or grading this particular item. But I don't know about you, because sometimes when I was teaching and I was grading essay questions, um, I wanted to make sure that I had my key points that my students would use to, uh, would, would, would need to meet to respond to an item to get full credit. And so we're eliminating that little post-it note or that little sticky note here, and we're gonna give you grading notes inside the item. So that way, uh, as you're grading or marking an item, uh, you can have your reference point directly in the user interface. So we'll just say, um, And I'll just say that the grading notes was it was really bad and we passed a lot of laws, which is true. I can add that to a bank if I wanted to, I can give feedback, but we're just gonna go ahead and say that's done. Uh, and then we can, we can publish this quiz or this essay and I can go back and take this assessment as a student as well. So we'll take this quiz, no time limit, and we'll just start typing. 
and I can say it was bad, and I've met my, my minimum and my maximum, and I can say it was really, really, really bad, and I've now exceeded my maximum, but I can still um, submit my assessment, and we'll go from here. Oops. And I didn't get any credit because this question requires grading from my instructor. So I'm gonna return to Canvas, and as the instructor, I'm gonna go back in and grade this essay. So I'm gonna go to my gradebook, and we're gonna look at uh, this uh, student's response. So we'll go to SpeedGrader, and we can look at the, the prompt, the student's response, uh, I can see that they exceeded the maximum words I wanted for this essay, and so, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna just be nice and say this is okay, so we're gonna give them full credit by clicking on that check mark, and we just give them immediately full credit by, by clicking on the check mark. Uh, if, so it makes grading essays much easier because you have a check mark to say full credit and an X to say uh, no credit, and we award points that way. And of course, you always have the ability to give fudge points, and I can give feedback, additional comments to the student. And my feedback to the student is, you exceeded the maximum word count, but the essay was quite insightful. And that's what the student can see when they get feedback. So we'll update uh, that score, and we'll go back to Canvas. And then as a student, I can go into the gradebook, and I can see that I got full credit. Pretty awesome. So, that's quizzes.next. That's where we are today. What do you think? <laughs> awesome. Um, oh. I have one more thing to show you. One more thing. Here's a quiz on the human heart. It's a one question quiz and it's a hot spot. So I'm gonna take this quiz and look at that. It's an animated GIF or GIF. I say GIF, you can choose how you wanna pronounce it even though GIF is right. I am just jealous. There you go, um, and I, that's the editing view. Let me go into the uh, taking view. And we'll begin that assessment here. And I'm supposed to identify uh, the tricuspid valve in this image of an ultrasound of the heart. So I'm gonna take a guess and say it's right here. And we'll submit and we'll see if I got it right. And I didn't. That's okay. And now I can see my incorrect feedback. Oh, I have a link to a diagram of the heart, and I can also see, uh, I should review chapter five, so I can review the actual, um, the actual diagram, and oh, shoot, it was right there. There you go. So, We did it live. Now let's think about where we're going. What's next? So we have our formula item type that we're in the, that's currently under development. Our file upload item is also under development. And you can see that we support uh, variables, uh, scientific notation, a margin of error, significant digits are all a part of our design and, and features that we'll implement over time. But our, 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 tool, our formula item type is, is going very well. Uh, we're also making other enhancements to item banking. So today, our new item banking tool follows the user. Uh, you no longer have to associate it or search and discover item banks uh, whenever you have a new course. Uh, item banks follow you as you move from course to course. Um, yeah. And then um, future developments around item banking is alignment of content 
and, and of lining of items to keywords and metadata like difficulty level, depth of knowledge, Fleisch Kincaid rating, uh, other keywords that you can then use to search for content within your item banks. So, so lots of great enhancements coming in the road for item banks. Uh, next, we look at regrading. Uh, and regrading is, is also uh, under development, and you'll have regrading for everything, anything that's auto-graded. Uh, we're not gonna, we're, we'll do our best to continue to implement regrading for all of the item types that, that are supported within quizzes that are automatically graded. And you'll have scenarios where you can support um, giving points to the new correct answer, students who got the old correct and new correct answer, uh, only to those who submitted an answer, and then points to everyone like you're throwing out the question. We'll also look at the honor code. That's something I mentioned last year, uh, an academic integrity reminder. We'll continue uh, to consider that for future development. Uh, other things we're thinking of are like next generation item analysis where we can at look at item analysis not just for uh, simple items like multiple choice and true false and multiple answer, but we'll add uh, statistics uh, to, our, to our battery of item analysis for questions like matching uh, that you see here or uh, categorization, so we have mul uh, multiple interactions in a single item. We're also looking at uh, inclusion of on-screen tools and uh, how, we can, how we can best provide those types uh, of on-screen tools for use. Uh, and then we're also lo still con looking at and considering how we can work with our, our friends at other companies who also provide uh, third-party item types. And uh, we're looking at, at how we can best implement uh, a framework for this type of integration uh, in the coming months. Additionally, we're also looking at survey functionality. Uh, we have survey functionality in Canvas quizzes today, and we'll look at including that uh, in our tool set as we move forward, including a Likert scale item type. So that's where we're going. Now I'm pretty sure you have questions. So let me take what I think are some of your questions and we'll answer them right now. First of all, what is the difference between quizzes.next and Gage? So quizzes.next is designed for course-based assessment, and Gage is designed for decontextualized, scaled assessment, where you wanna deliver a test for all of third grade, is an example. And you get all of the reporting that goes around with that type of scaled assessment tool. What item types will quizzes.next support? Well, in addition to what I showed you today, we have fill in the blank, uh, hotspot, categorization, and ordering, those are some of our new interactions, as well as all of the classics like multiple answer, multiple choice, matching, true, false. Is there a content migration pathway? Yes, there is. Uh, instructors will be able to move content from the quizzes classic to quizzes.next with a migration tool, and that'll be quiz by quiz, so that way instructors have the, uh, can make the decision about when and how they move from the old tool to the new tool. Are the APIs different? Yes, they are. And we'll publish documentation around our new APIs uh, in the coming months. Is quizzes.next an open source project? Yes, it is. And we'll uh, make announcements around uh, that uh, in the coming months as well. When will Quizzes Classic go away? We don't know yet. We're gonna give you plenty of time to migrate from the current tool, Quizzes Classic, to the new tool, Quizzes.next. And when we do make decisions about the end of life of current quizzes or Quizzes Classic, we'll let you know. We will post in our release notes, and we'll make decisions around that, uh, and we'll, we'll let you know um, in the future. But we have not made decisions around that yet today. When? When can I get my hands on this awesomeness? Well, we have a beta available today. However, not everybody can get it. So if you're interested to be an early adopter uh, and kick the tires in a product that's still under development, please contact your CSM and we'll be in contact with you uh, when we're ready to begin rolling it out. Uh, there'll be an agreement and uh, a process in place, but not everyone will be able to get the beta right away. But uh, if you are interested in being an early adopter, please do contact 
your customer success manager. So with that, thank you very much. We look forward to showing you more of quizzes as it's released. Have a great afternoon and enjoy the last evening of the conference. Thank you, agents.